Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. After the release of the very popular MicroCork episode, a lot of people asked me how to get past the limited user interface of this instrument by using MIDI controllers. I have a ton of those fader boxes and I love them to death because they are great problem solvers in many applications. You will not be a MIDI pro after this tutorial as it can be a very complex matter. We are only going to talk about what kind of MIDI controllers are best suited for the use with the microcorg, the MIDI messages we are going to send and how to set all this up. There are gazillions of MIDI controllers out there, so chances are high that the one you're using will not be covered in this video. I will also not talk about the highly specialized ones like Ableton Push, as this is where Fecal Meta really hits the air conditioner if you want to use them outside of the standard protocol. Let's get right to it! Let's categorize our MIDI controllers for tweaking the microcorg into three broad groups. Cool, semi-cool and I knew this was gonna be trouble. Regardless of the MIDI controller used, we have to get familiar with two basic MIDI concepts. Channels and control changes. Every MIDI connection has 16 channels. They are mostly independent communication lines and all MIDI channels are created equal, so just choose the one you want to use. The transmitting and receiving device must be set to the same channel. We are going to use channel 1. Control changes are the go-to MIDI messages for um, changing controls. Channel volumes, pans, FX sends and so on come to mind. Every device with a MIDI port and some without should have a so-called MIDI implementation chart. You can usually find it in the manual. The MIDI implementation chart of the microcorg is nothing to call home about, but there is a whole chapter dedicated to MIDI communication. Nice! In this chapter we can find a list of all the parameters and the corresponding MIDI messages. For example, filter cutoff, the grooviest of all synth parameters, can be controlled using control change number 74. All we have to do is connect the MIDI controller to the microcorg, choose the right channel on both devices and find a way to tell the MIDI controller to send the desired control change when moving the fader or knob or whatever you want to use for that parameter. This is where things might get tricky. Let's start with the MIDI controller category COOL. Those have a dedicated MIDI output and you don't need software to program them. Just get them powered up, connect them to the microcorg and you're good to go. I am using a discontinued Evolution UC33, but there are plenty of alternatives on the market. In this case, all you have to do is to choose a fader, press Ctrl Select, move the fader, press Ctrl Assign and enter the desired control change number. The MIDI channel was already set to 1, but it can be changed with the Channel Assign button. Repeat the process for all the other parameters and don't forget to save. As I have already pointed out, this procedures vary greatly from one MIDI controller to the other, so you will probably have to actually read the manual of the one you're using. The next MIDI controller category, semi-cool, is one of the most widespread ones. There is only a USB connector, so you can't just hook it up to the microcorg. You will also need to wrap your head around the editor software of your MIDI controller to teach it the parameter set of your synth. Most of those editors are rather straightforward, while some of them can be a major pain in the derriere. What is more, you need some kind of translator between USB MIDI and real 5-pin MIDI. I am just routing it through Ableton Live and a MIDI interface, but there are dedicated hardware devices for that job too. The I knew this was gonna be trouble category are mostly old devices and you can't really teach them anything. This old Roland MIDI controller for example has four different sets of controls. That's it. One of them actually spits out some messages the microcorg can understand if you switch the synth to channel 16. Not the best solution. To make it do what you want it to do you will need some kind of MIDI translator. I am going to use MIDI AUX but there are of course other options. Connect the MIDI controller to a MIDI in and the microcorg to a MIDI out of your computer and tell MIDI AUX to pass data from the fader box to the synth. You can now monitor all the MIDI messages going in and out of your computer. As you can see, it's not the ones we want. Fortunately, we can tell MIDI AUX to change the incoming messages into those the microcorg can actually understand. Again, don't forget about the MIDI channel and turn on the MIDI map when closing the window. We're ready to go.
If you are interested in musically meaningful applications of the MicroCorg MIDI controller combination, feel free to check out the original MicroCorg A Hipster Synth episode. Did I miss something? What's the MIDI controller of your choice? Leave a comment and thanks for watching. See you next time.